Hello everybody, so new review for you guys today. We're talking about the upcoming horror film from Blumhouse, Fantasy Island. Even if the original Fantasy Island starring Ricardo Montalban is a little bit before my time, I have seen episodes of the show and it's really fun. I mean, it's a classic for a reason. I wasn't really too sure though about this horror reboot, this full-on horror reboot that they're doing from Blumhouse. Blumhouse, I like a lot of Blumhouse movies, but they are definitely fairly hit and miss. Because for every Halloween or Get Out, we have stuff like Black Christmas and also Truth or Dare. And ironically, enough most of the people involved with Truth or Dare the director and three of the four writers are back for this film Fantasy Island so not a great sign I have to say and also not only that another great sign there were no Thursday showings so I had to go see it this morning so that's always a good sign let's just not even show your movie on Thursday night previews so this version of Fantasy Island centers around guests coming to Mr. Rourke's remote tropical island where he makes their secret dreams come true but when fantasies turn into nightmares the guests have to solve the island's mystery in order to escape escape with their lives. I went into this thinking it was gonna be a very bad movie just because of them trying it feels like to hide the movie with no screenings and they weren't gonna show it on Thursday. I figured maybe there'd be some campy fun so bad it's good kind of stupid elements like Truth or Dare had even though I think that Truth or Dare is a bad movie overall. But unfortunately there's really nothing here like a Truth or Dare where it actually is enjoyable bad. It's just bad in general. And it's really unfortunate. If I were going to give this film any sort of credit, I guess you could say that the film is competently shot. Other than that, there's pretty much all negatives here and here on out. The script for the film is pretty bad. The dialogue that these characters have to spew out is pretty much cringe throughout the entire movie. Especially these two dude bro like characters that are just some of the worst characters I've seen on screen in a very long time. Like you really cringe every time that they have any sort of dialogue exchange. I don't know what was going on. The acting actually all around was pretty bad from everyone across the board really from Lucy Hale to Maggie Q. The only one that seemed to kind of be trying is Michael Pena playing Mr. Rourke and he kind of just tries to do his best Ricardo Montalban impression and it doesn't really work out for him too well. His character's pretty much given no depth. I mean he just kind of pops in here and there just because you have to have Mr. Rourke in a Fantasy Island adaptation otherwise it would make no sense. Not that a lot of this movie actually makes sort of sense anyways just with the way that some of the storylines go on because we have so many different people having different fantasies on the island. Most of them actually kind of contradicting the rules that were set in place when they got on the island in the first place which you know just goes to show you there wasn't a lot of thought put into this script not only that but there's a third act twist in this film that's really dumb I mean it's very predictable if you pay attention in the beginning of the film but it's still really dumb when they actually try to reveal it in the third act it's probably one of the worst twists I've seen in a movie in at least the last couple years. The marketing as well is also somewhat misleading due to the fact that it's kind of marketing itself as this horror film filled with jump scares and monsters and creatures and all that. And there's really like no scares for about two thirds of the movie other than one or two creepy, I guess you could say, things in the background or like a gross looking character. Other than that, there's really no scary elements until the third act. I guess it's billed as maybe more like a adventure comedy with a little bit of horror sprinkled in because it's Blumhouse after all. But yeah, that's also really weird that they're even marketing this also as a Valentine's Day movie because... If, you have, if you're going to take someone to see this on Valentine's Day, more power to you. There's much better things you could be doing with your time. This very easily could have been a January release just because it is pretty much bad all across the board other than it being somewhat competently shot. I mean, the acting is really bad. The stories makes no sense, really, for the most part. Third act twist is just mind-bogglingly predictable and dumb, especially for anyone that has any sort of brain cells. It's just all bad all across the board. There's no scares. The adventure aspect is actually pretty dull. The, it's just really all, all across the board a really disappointing movie. And I think if you're a fan of Fantasy Island going into this, you're going to not really like what you see, especially because it's so radically different that it kind of just ostracizes anyone that likes the show. So I don't know if it's even going to gain those people back. I mean, there is, I guess you could say, references to the television show just because so many people throughout the movie point, you know, and say the plane, the plane like Tattoo does. Does. And there is a reference towards the very end to a tattoo, although I'm not going to get into what it is because I thought that was really dumb as well. But yeah, I really don't recommend this movie. It's definitely not the worst horror movie I've seen this year. I mean, we've had The Turning and also The Grudge as well. So those are, I guess, taking the top spots for worst films so far I've seen this year. It's competently shot. That's really about it. Like, it's kind of just something you completely forget about. It really doesn't have that, like, so dumb it could be kind of enjoyable if you're really drunk like a Truth or Dare film has. 
I, I think that Jeff Wadlow and, and Lizzie Hale should just not make movies together anymore between this and Truth or Dare. I think they should both go their separate ways. I mean, I, th- clearly it's not working for them other than, I mean, I guess at the box office it is because these movies make a ton of money. Just like this one will probably end up making a bunch of money as well just because it's shot so cheap. Horror movies are like that. It's Blumhouse's model. If you're curious about this film, I would definitely stick to waiting until it's on streaming or maybe if it's on TV one day passing by on flipping channels. Otherwise, I won't recommend this film. But that's just my thoughts on Fantasy Island from Blumhouse. Make sure you leave a comment comments down below if you've seen the film. What did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Make sure you leave a comment so we can get a discussion going in the comments. You know I talk all these movies here. And also, if you were on this Fantasy Island, what would your fantasy be? Just, you know, it could be anything, I guess. But as always, thank you so much for checking out my reviews. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like. Hit that subscribe button if you want to keep updating my movie reviews, channel reactions, unboxings, and more. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.